Hey everyone, in today's video, I'm going to show you how to integrate HTMX into a Django project to have instant search on one of your pages. So by instant search, I mean this feature. So I'll type in something, I'll type in Randy, and what I get here are results that match the search query Randy. So as you can see, I have a performer named Brandy, and because Randy is contained inside of Brandy, it returns in the results. So like all these results have Randy somewhere in either the title or the performer, and as you saw, it returns instantly. If I type in cold, for example, we see I get a completely different list of results, but it comes back instantly. And I didn't use any JavaScript to implement this, it's just HTMX, and you'll see how simple it is uh, to integrate HTMX into something like this to build this instant search in your Django projects. And I just want to mention that if you need help one-on-one uh, -on -one with something like this, you can go to prettypredict.com slash coaching. Uh, I help people one-on-one -on -one with HTMX, Django, Python, anything that you need help with in your apps, I can help with. So just go to prettyprinter.com slash coaching to learn more. And if you want to have a Zoom call with me, you can. So that's it for what we're building. So now let's get into actually building it. So to start, let me show you what I have already. Right now I have one view called index and it returns a template called index.html. And this is what the return template looks like. It's basically just a search bar at the top and then some table headers. And then later the search process will fill in all the rows for this particular table as you saw in the demo. And then I also have my models.py. So in here I have a song model that has a title, performer, chart debut, peak position, and time on chart on it. And the basic idea is one record in the song table will represent one song. And I have this function here that will load some data into the database. So I went to this GitHub repo here, which is in this tab, and I downloaded the CSV. So it's basically all the Billboard Hot 100 songs since 1958. So it's 30 something thousand songs inside of a CSV. So I just downloaded it, renamed it to data.csv. If I click on it here, VS Code says it's too big to view, but 53.42 megabytes at the time of recording the video. And what I'm doing here in this function is I'm opening that file, so data.csv, and I'm just looking for how long each song was on the uh, Billboard Top 100 chart and also the peak position. So that's what I'm just looking for here. So just doing some uh, max and mins for that. And then I'm adding them to the database by creating uh, song objects for them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run this. So I'm gonna open up the shell, python manage.py shell. And I'll say from app.models import load data. And I'll just run this function load data. It's gonna take a little bit of time, but I'll come back when it's done. Okay, so the process is done now. I'll exit out of the shell and I'll just go inside of the database file just to show you. So select star from app underscore song and we see I get over 31,000 records in here. So what I'll do is I'll close this out and I'll start on the next part of this example app. So I'll go to views.py and what I wanna be able to do is I want to be able to search that table. And the way I'm gonna search is I'm gonna create a view uh, called search, so slash search, and it's going to have a query parameter called Q, and then whatever I type for Q will be searched in the database in the way that I'll show you here. So I'll create this search view, takes in request, and I'm going to get Q. So this is the parameter I was talking about. I'm going to get that from the get in request, so request.get.getQ. And just to show you what that looks like, I'll print out Q. And I'm going to return a new template. So return request. And then I'm going to create a template here inside of my templates directory, but I'm also going to create another directory called partials. So I like this name for templates that are used in HTMX. So they don't represent an entire page, they just represent like one part of a page that HTMX will use to inject into like a bigger page. So partials, and then I'll call it results, results.html, right? So I'll leave that there. So partials slash results.html, 
And then it's going to take in some results, but for now I'll just pass an empty dictionary, but later when I have the actual results, I'll pass them in that dictionary. So first let me show you what this looks like, the queue. So I need to set up a URL and I'll import the search function, the search view here. And then I'll create a path, uh, search slash, and then search and then name equals search. Okay, so now let me start up server and then go back here and then I can do question mark or actually sorry slash search slash and then question mark Q equals and then let's say I want to search for Anthony right so Q equals Anthony and then we see here it prints Anthony so the idea is whatever the user is typing in it will end up on that Q HTMX is gonna build that automatically but that's what it looks like here Okay, so let me go back to views.py. And now I want to build the query that actually looks in the database for a particular result. So what I want to do is I want to import the model song. So from app song or app.models import song. And I also want to import the Q class from Django.models because I'll need that in my query. So from Django.db.models import Q. And I'll show you how to use that in just a second. So what I want to do here is I want to check to see if Q exists. So if there's a value in Q, that means the user is searching for something. And then I'm going to have the results equal something. And then if Q is empty, that means they're not searching for anything. So I'll just have the results come back empty. So because I have the results, I can pass them to the template in the context here. So results, results. And now here on this results here inside of if Q, this is where I can build a query. So I'm querying song and I'll do objects.filter. And there are two things that I want to filter on. I want to filter on the title of the song and the performer. So remember here I have title and performer inside of the model. So the name of the song and whoever is performing the song. So I want the search value Q to be contained in one of the two. If it is, then it will return in the result. If it isn't, then nothing returns. So because I want those two different things uh, inside of the filter and it's an or, so it can be either one or the other, I need to use the Q class. And inside the Q class, then I'll just use the filter mechanism as usual. So I wanna say the title, I contains. So I contains just mean case insensitive. So um, uppercase and lowercase characters don't matter. Uh, I contains Q, right? So if the title contains the Q text, then it will return in a query. And because I'm using Q, I can use the pipe to mean or. So the title contains Q or I can say the performer contains Q. So I contains for insensitive contains. And then what I wanna do is I'll build a new line and I want to order these. So what I want to do is I want to order by uh, two things. Let's say the peak position. So I want like number one songs to appear first. And then I want the newest songs to appear. So like, you know, if an artist has multiple number one songs, I want the most recent one to appear first. But all the number ones appear sorted by how recent they are. Then like all the number two peak positions and then when they were debuted and so on. So just minus chart debut because I want to start with the most recent and then peak position. I want to start with the lowest number, which means like number one is, you know, peak position one and so on. And then for this, because I don't want to show all the results. So imagine if they type like a single character, like A in a search, there might be thousands of results and it might be too much for the page. So for this query, I just want to return the first um, 100 results. Okay. So now I have those results and I'm passing it to the template. And what I need to do in the template is I need to build a table row for it. So I'll go to results here and I'll loop over the results. So I'll say for result in results and I'll put the in for down here. And what I want to do is create a table row. So just note that in index.html I have a table here and I have the table row for the headers. So anything that goes in the T body that has a table row will just match this table header. So I'm going to have the table sales and then the first one is going to be title, right? And then I'll do that five more times or four more times. And then I'm going to have performer. 
I'll have a uh, peak position. I'll have, what are the other two? Uh, time on chart. And I'll have chart debut, right? So I'm creating space for all those things. So now that I have that inside of results and I have the search set up, I can now use that. So I'll go back here and this is the search that I have. I'll just refresh and now we see some data. So obviously this data isn't formatted because it's not inside of a table. I need to put this inside of an actual HTML table so it can look better. But as you can see, all the data is there. So searching for Anthony, I get a bunch of results. So now we need to get this information into my table and I want it to happen automatically. So I want everything to appear here when the user searches for something and that's where HTMX comes in. So let's go over to HTMX and if you're familiar with HTMX, it's just basically a way to uh, perform dynamic actions on a page without using any explicit JavaScript. So it uses JavaScript under the hood, obviously, but the library itself, the interface is just adding attributes to HTML elements to uh, do some dynamic action. So to use this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste the script tag so I can import HTMX into my template. And then I'll paste it here at the top inside of the head tag. And notice in here, I already have an input called Q and it's just the search one. And this is where I'm going to add the HTMX elements. So the idea with HTMX is first you give it the endpoint that it's going to hit. So I created the endpoint. So here I wanted to send a Git request whenever the user searches to slash search. Next, I need to tell it a trigger. So I need to tell it like when it should send this request to search. And in this case, what I want to do is when the user is typing. So the event for that is called key up. I want to make sure that the text inside of the input actually changed so I can do changed. And then I don't want this to send like every single time the user types something. Instead, I want there to be a slight delay just in case they type fast. So I can do delay and then 500 milliseconds. Finally, I need to tell HTMX where to inject the HTML that gets returned. So remember that in views, I return some HTML with results and HTMX needs to inject that somewhere. So here I can specify our target. So HX target, and then I have the results T body here. So it has an ID of results. So I use hash results here and it will inject the results, which are table rows into this T body section. So let's give it a shot. Let's go back over. And I need to start, no, the server is on. And let me search for Anthony again. And now we see all these results for Anthony show up. We see peak position starts at one and it goes down. And we see the chart debut starts, you know, in the recent past and then it goes back depending on the number. So let's look at like number eight. We see we have 1986 is the first one on the number eight peak position. And then we go to 1959. If I try someone else, let's say Taylor, uh, we get Taylor Swift. We see she has a bunch of number one songs. And then we see the most recent chart debut is from last year, uh, November 11th. And then it just goes back uh, from there. And the earliest Taylor Swift one is from 2012. And then the earliest one for number one that has the name Taylor in it is this song by James Taylor from 1971. So we can see that the ordering is working properly. So anything that you search for will appear. And the results come back instantly. And as you can see, we didn't add any JavaScript to this at all. So that's it for this video. That's all I want to show you. As you can see, it was really simple to set up. If you have any questions about how any of this stuff works, feel free to leave a comment down below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. So thank you for watching and I will talk to you next time.